Assalamu alaikum wa wabarakatuh, brothers. Okay, so, and sisters, listen to me very carefully, inshallah. We know what we're going to do. We're going to break down some cases so we can learn how to diagnose people and have the right approach. Hopefully, this video will be beneficial to someone. So, as I spoke earlier in the other video about um, a client when they come in, and how you diagnose the person is basically about their symptoms. So let me just fix this about their symptoms. So you you ask them about the symptoms and then they kind of tell you them. So the ones that we mentioned on the last video, loss of hair, uh, loss of weight, can't go to sleep, extreme anger. Um, and then you try to backtrack and see when did this start? You go back the years that when it started and then you try to build a case. So the, the video that I mentioned was to do with the evil eye. The reason was that she was very uh, clever. She came the first in, in her uh, grades in university um, exams and things like that. We found out that the person that was afflicted didn't react, but the parent, the guardian, they reacted, right? So I left it at that, I gave them a program. I told them what to do, how to get rid of the, the evil eye. And what I did actually, sorry, I investigated a bit more about the Guardian, who did they sit down with, who did they talk to, and I found that they sit down with a particular people, and none of their children have um, went to university or passed exams or anything like that. They have a different total lifestyle, uh, and they ask this person a lot of questions about their uh, children, uh, who, you know, are very educated, mashallah, tabarakallah. And uh, so she's the one who's suffering from the evil eye, and the reason are the children who are, mashallah, who go to university and they pass exams and get high grades. Okay, the problem here is what I get a lot of people complaining about is that the therapist starts starts suggesting things to do with magic and then it causes a bit of problems. Um, this is what you should try to keep away from. Don't suggest, don't you know suggest especially in the beginning of the interview or the beginning of the questions and answers you're asking questions and then they tell you their symptoms don't suggest anything just listen to them give them time to speak about their own case now a, a case uh, another kind of scenario that you can come across is a, a case where uh, a person comes to you and says to you for instance that their whole life is upside down and nothing makes sense everything is just on a uh, everything is a struggle uh, everyone is is struggling in the family and this happened after one of our family members visited uh, a certain country that they're from for instance uh it could be pakistan it could be bangladesh it could be somalia uh, you know north africa it could be you know saudi arabia they went there came back and their life changed and then they'll explain to you they say to you that we found in our belongings uh some weird objects okay the, it, the objects could be anything from material through you know it could be solid like rocks stones it could be a taweez um and all of these kind of stuff so now we have now we have suspicion of magic being done to this family when you first hear the story, you're like, no, nah, this can't be true. I mean, even a therapist uh, would say, mm, I, I don't know if I can believe this. This is just normal life. Everyone goes through struggles in life. But you haven't experienced what they've experienced. So, and even though it, when they describe it to you, it's not going to make a lot of sense because all they're going to say is that we're going through struggles in our life. But the only time you become convinced is when you start getting some form of reaction when you recite on them and even the reaction might be might be minute it might be just you know feeling goosebumps it might be just feeling a bit of tightness of the chest or feeling heavy on the left side of the body or feeling the legs just become heavy or the arm so but then you've got to take in mind as well that when they sit for a long period of time when you read on them like in 15 minutes after 15 minutes sitting in one position you know the arms can get heavy the legs can get heavy so you've got to be careful of this as well so the best thing to do is stay open-minded and cross-examine again. So read again and see if they react again. Uh, if they do, if they start getting dizzy, if they start getting more uh, heavy in the body and they start displaying other symptoms, then yes, give them a program to follow and then they will need to see this through. 
and make a lot a lot of dua as we know the prophet sallallahu when he was affected by magic he made dua after dua until allah showed him uh, what's causing him the issue that he was su suffering from and then he was shown to him where the magic was and then the magic was destroyed now alhamdulillah in the case that i'm dealing with now um, the, the the sihr subhanallah was found in the bag of the person who uh, is is the, basically the head of the family the, the the objects that were found are objects like the ones i'm going to show you now on the screen basically a stone and, and it's engraved inside the, these stones like stars and other other kind of symbols and how do we explain them this this is as muslims we explain them as to be uh, you know uh, objects of magic now the next thing is how do you destroy this well first and foremost you put them in water that's been recited on so you get a bowl of water or a basin anything that can can take the water and you recite eight kursi or fatiha first let's start from the beginning al fatiha um if you can read uh the verse of Suleiman where it talks about magic uh, I think that's 102 you read that and you read a kursi and you read the last um, the last two chapter two verses of Surah Al-Baqarah and then you read if you know the verses of Sihr and then recite them if you don't just recite Al-Falaq Qul Allah Ahad Al-Falaq and uh, Nas the whole verse and then or the whole chapter and then you blow in the water and you put the place the objects in that um bowl or basin or bucket whatever it is that you're going to use and then after a while maybe after 10 minutes five minutes it could be a minute take it out and then break that object and inshallah in that the magic will be broken and allah knows best now the concern ruqya you perform the ruqya um you don't look to get a reaction you don't try to make the person react because that could just cause more problems mm -hmm. your job is not to actually make a jinn take possession of the of the body for you to find out what's real and what's not because the jinns at the end of the day are going to lie to you anyway and you will find a problem if the person is suffering from the evil eye at the same time they're fussing, uh, suffering from magic the jinn is going to come and say lots of lies and cause mayhem so it's best not to do that best thing to do is make a lot of dua to Allah so to expose where the sihr is, the sihr is and then destroy it Alhamdulillah the, the family that I'm dealing with know where the sihr is they've seen it now hope, you know, hopefully they've broken it if they haven't I'm going to advise them to do so anyway I hope this video has been um, constructive and helpful and till another video Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh okay before I finish very very important um issue that we need to talk about is when you have an object that you found that you believe is to do with sihr like a ta'weez uh, an object like a doll for instance a voodoo doll when you go to a therapist don't just give him the the object you you need either to stay with him until he destroys it in front of you or you destroy it yourself but if you give it to the therapist you, you know you don't know how many people he sees a day you don't know what his life is like you don't know he might get affected or he might be affected by other things and he'll forget to destroy that sihr now as we know from the hadith of the prophet وسلم, once the, the sihr was destroyed that's it he he just forgot about it moved on and he didn't you know mention it to anyone else uh i.e uh in that in that particular time he just said destroy the well and do not speak about it to the Sahaba to not cause more fitna. Now, the thing is, if you give it to someone and he keeps it and uses it as, um, you know, a souvenir, uh, he uses it to explain other things. For instance, he might be thinking that he's doing something good, you know, giving doubt to people. He think he's doing something good by, you know, exposing these kind of things. But the person who's afflicted himself or herself, you know, the sihr has not been destroyed. So the sihr needs to be destroyed okay so brothers and sisters if you are scared of actually um, doing it yourself make sure you stay with the therapist as they destroy the magic or whatever object that is okay barakallahu feekum assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh